it's a pleasure to be here and uh, i would really like to to be in your beautiful country but i think uh, soon uh, we can uh, again uh, um, be in the in presence so we have to speak uh, about posterior skull basement in Joma, so we still don't know many things uh, the definition of a posterior skull based meningioma i mean uh, definition and classification the epidemiology uh, and some uh, about the presenting symptoms of this uh, uh, different uh, site meningioma and posterior fossa and of course the surgical treatment we all know that meningiomas are usually benign and now we we saw really more and more atypical meningiomas uh, and malignant meningiomas, but uh, we all know that are uh, uh, benign tumors and uh, uh, they arise in particular from arachnoidal cap cells. So in posterior fossa, we can have also meningioma within the fourth ventricle. They represent about 30% of all intracranial tumor with an incidence of 2.6 per 100 person per year, and the posterior cranial meningiomas uh, are about 10% uh, of all intracranial meningiomas. The tentorial surface uh, is the uh, most uh, affected uh, size uh, with the 30%, with about uh, one third of all the meningioma of the posterior fossa in the tentorial surface. And then we have the occipital surface, uh, I mean, the convexity meningioma in the posterior fossa, CP angle, then uh, the foragum magmanum, the, uh, the meningiomas in the four ventricle and the, in the jugular foramen are rare, and uh, the lateral uh, portion of the petrosal phase uh, rise uh, account for the 10% of uh, all meningiomas. My personal series, uh, which is uh, about 1,000 uh, uh, of uh, meningiomas in all sides and uh, a little more of 100 cases uh, in the posterior fossa. Uh, I saw the, 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 the series of uh, uh, Professor Mesra, which is uh, tremendous, uh, incredible. So my best compliments to, of course, uh, Professor Sami and Professor Misma but uh, uh, we uh, operate a lot of uh, mm, quite a lot of lateral petrous uh, surface meningiomas uh, and uh, uh, of course the uh, tentorial surface meningiomas uh, are uh, the most frequent cases uh, and the uh, petroclival uh, meningiomas uh, and cp angle uh, meningiomas uh, are quite uh, a good number but uh, and now arises uh, the question uh, because uh, uh, which classification for uh, a um, posterior fossa meningioma uh, we have to use we have uh, uh, many classification i just uh, uh, write down two classification the secar and, and right classification and of course i'm italian so the castellano and ruggero classification the second and right classification uh, uh, divides the uh, posterior fossa meningiomas in uh, uh, in uh, six uh, gray in six types: uh, the uh, cerebellar convexity and lateral tentorial, uh, with uh, an extension on the tentorium, of course, and transverse and sigmoid sinus, CP angle meningioma in the petrous region. Uh, jugular foramen, these are rare, but they arise from uh, the cerebellar medullary angle and the internal jugular vein, uh, and they, they can be ex also extracranial. The petroclival, they arise uh, in the upper clivus, uh, the upper two-third of clivus, and the cavernous side, they, they can extend to the cavernous sinus, uh, Meckel's cave, uh, and the petrous ridge. For magnum, uh, so uh, the lower um, third of uh, the clivus and the C1, C2 area, and uh, a number of unclassified uh, um, meningiomas. But uh, in this uh, classification, we can see that uh, the CP angle and the petroclival can be similar 
and if you see a lot of um, publication you cannot uh, really know what is petrochlival uh, petrochlival means uh, anterior to the fifth nerve or a cp angle or um, the posterior part of the petrous bone we uh, 70 now 70 years uh, ago uh, 69 uh, Castellano and Ruggiero uh, wrote these classifications uh, uh, dividing the, the meningiomas in cerebellar convexity, tentorium, posterior surface of the petrous bone, clivus, and foragmen magnum. So um, we have uh, uh, this uh, uh, six types of meningiomas, uh, petroclival, foragmen magnum, cerebellar convexity, tentorial, and posterior petrous bone meningiomas, and uh, meningiomas, also meningiomas that uh, that uh, extend uh, from the middle fossa, uh, the middle fossa to the posterior fossa. The petroclival meningioma, they arise uh, from the upper two third of the clivus. They are located at the petroclival junction, medial uh, to the um, internal auditory meatus and posterior to the trigeminal nerve. Um, we uh, consider uh, the posterior uh, bone, uh, uh, posterior petrous bone meningiomas, uh, um, uh, the area limited by the petroclival junction anteriorly, the petrous ridge posteriorly, uh, the inferior petrosal sinus, a uh, sigmoid sinus uh, inferiorly, and there's uh, the uh, Trautsen triangle, so the, the um, petrosal sinus uh, and the sigmoid sinus. But uh, <clears throat> we can imagine that uh, a, a posterior petrous bone meningioma anterior to the meniatus uh, uh, is uh, quite similar to a, 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 a uh, a meningioma that uh, uh, goes uh, uh, anteriorly, so a, uh, a not a posterior petrous bone meningioma, but a petroclival meningioma. So it's quite difficult to understand which is the region that delineate uh, the posterior petrous bone and the petroclival region. The foramen manium meningioma, these meningiomas arise from the, the foramen manium regions, uh, and uh, this is limited anteriorly by the lower third of the clivus uh, and the upper edge of the body of C2, and laterally by the jugular tubercles uh, and the upper aspect of C2 laminas, and posteriorly. Um, by the anterior edge of the squamous occipital bone and the C2 uh, spinous process. And then, of course, we, are, we can have uh, the tentorial meningiomas. They are the most frequent meningiomas. Uh, they are near or adjacent uh, to the venous sinuses. Uh, this is the one type, uh, or uh, near or uh, uh, critical neurovascular structures. Uh, and are classified on the basis of the size of the tentorial attachment into anterior, like this one, um, anterior, uh, middle, and posterior groups. Then we, we can have the convexity meningioma, the most uh, simple one, divided in four groups. The pure convexity meningiomas uh, arising from the dura uh, over the posterior convexity of the cerebellum, the group, group two, the inferior uh, uh, peritocular meningiomas uh, array, um, arising or invading the in, inferior wall of the torcular uh, uh, um, or the medial transverse sinus, the group uh, C that are uh, parasinusal meningiomas uh, uh, arising uh, in the angle between the petrus and the convexity dura, and uh, the meningiomas with the secondary invasion of the second of the cerebellar uh, convexity. 
uh, presenting symptoms uh, are various symptoms uh, depending on the site of meningioma the um, intracranial pressure the the uh, arise of uh, intracranial pressure is uh, is a very early symptom as uh, all the posterior fossa uh, tumors. So headache, papilledema, and uh, the cerebellar and brainstem syndrome is very frequent. And uh, of course, uh, we have the cranial neuropathies uh, depending on the site of the meningiomas with also visual symptoms uh, and uh, hallucination uh, <clears throat> that are, are due to the compression of the cerebral peduncle, visual hallucination, and then uh, uh, spinal cord compression or brainstem compression with spasticity or tetraplegia, um, hearing loss and tinnitus uh, with the compression on, of uh, eighth nerve, ataxia for cerebellar or tentonium meningioma, and uh, for the lower meningioma, uh, dys dysphonia or dysphagia, diplopia for the, um, uh, we can have a bilateral succinal uh, palsy just uh, for the uh, increased intracranial pressure in the posterior fossa, the fascial palsy, and of course, hydrocephalus. What about the radiation therapy? Uh, radiation therapy is uh, a very important tool. We have a, a very high recurrence rate, uh, uh, nearly 60 percent uh, after subtotal resection. And we um, have to uh, remember this, that uh, we have uh, to reach uh, a good uh, resection of the tumor to prevent the recurrences. Um, in, um, in case of uh, subtopal resection plus radiotherapy, the recurrence rate is uh, 30%, 32%, uh, at the medium follow up of uh, 78 months. Um, the radiotherapy uh, can uh, be uh, indicated uh, for older age with uh, great medical comorbidities uh, for, uh, uh, of course, uh, humor of small size, uh, and uh, they should be distant from optic uh, nerves. <clears throat> so what is the treatment? If we have non-neurological deficits uh, with uh, very small size uh, meningioma and uh, comorbidity, we can observe the, uh, the patients uh, for with the uh, NMR at three, six, and 12 months. If uh, the patient grows, we have uh, to operate the patients. And um, so uh, we have to operate the patients in case it will of uh, neurological symptoms, uh, size greater than uh, three centimeters or progression of the size of the tumor and with increased intracranial pressure, of course, hydrocephalus. <clears throat> what about the cerebral angiography before uh, before um, operation? Um, well, uh, we don't use it uh, uh, routinely. It's uh, very rare that uh, we ask for a cerebral angiography and embolization before the operation of a, a tumor in posterior fossa. Perhaps uh, some years ago, we use it uh, much more easily, uh, but now we have to consider only the case with uh, hypervascular meningioma with uh, hypotrophic feeders. <clears throat> but uh, we use uh, more and more uh, intraoperative neurophysiology with um, evoked potential, uh, um, uh, sens uh, somatosensory potential and motor potential brainstem uh, auditory evoked uh, potential, uh, VEP, <clears throat> free running electromyography and direct cranial nerve stimulation. I think in every case, uh, just in cases of tentorial meningiomas uh, or uh, convexity meningiomas, uh, we can avoid from uh, the use of uh, intraoperative neurophysiology, but uh, I think in all cases of uh, 
meningioma so the posterior fossa we use it <clears throat> surgical approaches uh, we saw a lot of, of beautiful surgical place approaches uh, in cases uh, of a posterior meningioma i have to say that uh, for petrochlioidal meningioma i also use uh, the retrosigmoid approach uh, is very in very selective phases uh, i go through the middle fossa so i completely agree with um, with the other authors uh, that spoke before me and uh, uh, we have to uh, we have a, a few complications after surgery the cranial nerve palsy is about five percent and uh, sometimes uh, hemorrhagic infarction in three percent so <clears throat> this is my last uh, uh, slide the goal of surgery is now is uh, of course uh, the quality of life of the patients but uh, we have uh, to remember that uh, we have to remove uh, to complete remove the meningioma not to complete to take off a piece of meningioma and send the patients uh, to uh, the radiosurgery uh, but uh, we have to um, completely remove the, men the meningioma of course uh, in case uh, that uh, we uh, cannot achieve a complete uh, removal on the meningioma is recommended uh, the radiosurgery and i think we have uh, uh, we need uh, a new classification uh, for posterior uh, fossa meningioma, especially for posterior uh, petrous bone meningioma. Thank you.